scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You need to understand this so that as you are training people in leadership, in your company, in ministry, understand that they are growing. A time will come if you do not know how to manage this, you are going to be in trouble. Because a time will come, the people you are raising will not need food again. The people in your company, the staff may have started as maybe even a security person somewhere, opening and closing the gates. But eventually as they begin to rise, you see that their needs and their priorities shift. Many parents do not understand the transitions in the behavior of their children. Now, if you understand this, you see, the way your child behaves, if he's receiving school fees from you, it's not the same way your child behaves. Now, if he's earning a scholarship of hundreds of thousands of naira or dollars, you see that the priorities change. Maslow helped us to put this thing in perspective. Let's look very quickly. Esteem needs. At this point, People begin to want independence and they begin to pay attention to achievement. What gives you fulfillment at this level is not eating well. It's not driving a car. You want to achieve goals. And then you want a sense of independence. You do not want to be under the hold of anybody or anything. Are we still together? Shout Amen. amen. I assume your silence is that you are really understanding the thing and you are allowing it to absorb into your spirit esteem needs at this point you begin to be sensitive to everything titles sensitive to recognition sensitive to who says what remember the five-year-old version of you before that time the ten-year-old version of you before that time has no peace there are people here today their concern is simply to come and hear the gospel press into Christ that it doesn't matter whether they are wearing an oversized cloth or not it doesn't matter whether what they are wearing is torn or not because according to Maslow the need for survival they are at the basic level now let the word keep coming the word keeps translating you as you are getting results what happens eventually you will leave the first part of the pyramid you will now rise to safety needs I'm tired of staying in a house with five or six or ten people. I think I need my own place now. Security and safety. Is that true? Yes. Esteem needs. The need for independence. The need for status. The need for prestige. This is why people join all kinds of clubs and societies. This is why people begin to come up with all kinds of things that help to concretize the, their relevance relevance and status and prestige and reputation are the key words at this level and then the fifth is called self-actualization needs self-actualization needs the need for fulfillment and the need for legacy for instance when you see someone who is at age 80 or 90 notice how everything reverses at age 80 or 90 the gentleman does not care again or the man the old man does not care whether his hair is combed he does not care whether he zips his trouser he does not care whether the buttons are in place he sits with you and says young man let me teach you something 45 years ago 
this is what happened and while you are looking at him it will be foolish of you as a young man to look at the person and say sorry the, you're, you're putting this shoe is supposed to be this way and he says so that is what your focus is on because at that level it is legacy his pride is not what he does with himself or to himself again his pride is the people that he's able to raise that become instruments of continuity notice how this transition happens in your life if you flog your child male or female your teenage child especially in the presence of anyone that is a huge embarrassment you would have taught something but you see an adult who fall down on the road and stand up and dust himself like nothing happened because he's looking for a job he has three children and he needs to sort things out that shame that he used to have as a little boy has gone because of other needs and other serious priorities abraham Mashlow. final recap and we'll get back to the teaching arranged in order of priority ascending order psychological or basic needs and then safety needs love and acceptance needs esteem needs self-actualization needs praise the name of the lord now please write this down thank you write this down i appreciate thank you thank you let's get to work thank you praise the name of the lord hallelujah thank you i appreciate you now write this down the highest psychological need we teach this in our school of ministry the highest psychological need of all men please write it and tie it in the name of jesus may you never forget this is the golden rule that governs us. the highest psychological need of all men is the need to be loved accepted celebrated and appreciated please write it down the highest psychological need of all men be loved the need to be accepted the need to be celebrated and the need to be appreciated hallelujah praise the name of the lord are we together now now listen to me sir everyone let her come i don't know her but please come and then you my friend the white man please come let him come to come sir please if you can don't be embarrassed please come come nothing to embarrass you at all please come man let's keep celebrating them just take it easy i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't know that you would need this thank you ma god bless you please come sir please come thank you god bless you thank you thank you please stand keep clapping till i ask you to stop keep clapping don't stop keep clapping now watch this watch this watch this you don't you may not know them and you don't even know what they have done but your clap has fulfilled this law the need whatever it is that you have done what they receive from your club is that i am loved am i right sirs? am i right ma i am accepted is that true i am appreciated and celebrated hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on just listen 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 we're learning something now you come and talk to this woman and tell her you don't like me and see what she will do to you are we together now yes because we have given her a perception that we love you we honor you sir and ma and we ask them to come to this altar and we ask everyone to stand and then to applaud them are we together now chances are that this our mother here and this our uncle here may not hate me easily are you seeing that now why because the memory of my honor fulfilling that psychological condition will not give them the room now imagine let's reverse it imagine that as our mother and our uncle were coming up here we asked them to come out and i started shouting at them respectfully speaking i said i don't know who you are but do you know i'm a man of god hurry up and don't waste my time come and stand here before i curse you now they may keep quiet now watch this 
and then I tell the man, you come stand, stand, and I push them and push, and nobody helps her up, and she stands here. And when I'm done with my example, I say, you can go, and I just push them like I'm pushing animals. Can I tell you this? It is possible that next week you would never see them here again. Now you understand what I say. The highest psychological need of any man, including the one looking at me, is the need to feel loved, the need to feel appreciated the need to feel celebrated and the need to feel what's the last one accepted people join occult groups because they want acceptance people fight and belong to groups why do people get angry when you don't invite them for festivities because they receive a perception through your non-invitation that you don't place value on them are we together now Please let's celebrate our mother. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Please help them down. Keep clapping till they go down. You've started. Finish it well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Are we together? Koinonia, please sit down. Let's continue now. The psychological build-up of man. So the highest psychological need of all men is the need to feel loved or beloved, accepted, celebrated, and appreciated. Is that true? Write this down. We begin our teaching on pride now. Before I define pride, let me tell you this a very important information pride is rooted in deep insecurity fear powerlessness and unworthiness pride is rooted in the feeling you can add the feeling pride intrinsically pride from a psychological angle is rooted in the feeling of Deep insecurity, fear, a sense of powerlessness and unworthiness. 95% of all manifestations of pride are a cover-up for these conditions. You have to understand this. Pride is rooted in a deep sense or a deep feeling of insecurity, fear, powerlessness, and unworthiness. That means if I feel insecure intrinsically, if I live in fear, if I feel I am powerless and not in control of people or circumstances, if I feel unworthy, I will have to devise a psychological way of covering that condition. The name of that cover-up is pride. Are we together now? Yes. So that intrinsically, largely so, may not be always the case, but almost always, anywhere you truly find pride, behind the scenes is an expression of insecurity, an expression of fear, an expression of powerlessness or lack of control, and an expression of unworthiness. So people create that psychological cover. They try to assume an attitude of boldness, intimidate or bully others. But behind the scenes, ask those who are legal practitioners, ask those who operate as security people all around. They will tell you, when you catch some of these people who are involved in all kinds of societal violence, once you sit with them down, after dealing with them, punishing them, when they are sure that destruction is imminent, they would break down and start crying. And you now tell them, but why do you do this? And then they will begin to tell you, nobody loves me. I came from a background where this... So most of that thing is a cover-up. An attempt to wrongly manage insecurity. An attempt to wrongly manage fear. 
an attempt to wrongly manage a sense of powerlessness and an attempt to manage unworthiness are we together now yes we're dealing with the deceitfulness of pride four or five scriptures and then i will tell you or let me just define pride and then we'll look at these scriptures please write this down three definitions we're looking at pride do not forget our topic tonight the lifting power of true humility the first definition of pride is a lust for the praises of men what is a lust what is lost on ungodly inordinate affinity a lust for the praises of men pride number two the second definition a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority don't worry i'll take it again a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity comma importance comma merit or superiority whether as cherished in the mind or as displayed in conduct i'll take it one last time pride a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority whether cherished in the mind or displayed in conduct please write it and look up you can see that there are two expressions to this definition on one hand it can be a perception that is cherished in the mind it never finds physical visibility and then the second you can it can be vocally expressed in conduct when pride is expressed we call it boastfulness but just because whether pride is expressed or not pride is pride are we together so a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance marriage or superiority whether as cherished in the mind or displayed in conduct let me give you my own definition now the third definition what is pride a feeling of being better than others on the strength of one's perception or obvious achievements a feeling of being better than others on the strength of one's perception that means just something that is worked up in your mind or in the presence of obvious achievements a feeling that you are better than others on the strength of your obvious achievement or just something that exists in the realm of your mind so pride the lost for the praises of men number two inordinate opinion of oneself number three the feeling of being better than others the following scriptures number one proverbs chapter 18 and verse 12 very instructive scriptures please let's pay attention the lord is teaching us can we read together as a family of faith if you can see it projected we read one two three before destruction the heart of man is haughty that's another word for pride and before honor is humility wow that means every time you see pride pride is only a john the baptist to something that is coming that before pride before destruction the heart of man is haughty is that true and it says before honor is humility very powerful scripture that anytime you see pride it did not come alone there is something it is dragging with it and what it is dragging is destruction so the end of all who are and remain in pride is destruction scripture number two proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18 the bible again here says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall can you see that now in the mouth of two or three witnesses the bible says a matter is established so pride 
goes before destruction it means that when satan wants to destroy a man wants to destroy a people the first thing that happens is that he introduces pride to their lives and in that state of pride destruction is beginning to form over their lives and their destinies the third scripture proverbs 29 and verse 23 Proverbs 29 and verse 23. I'd like us to read together if you do not mind. Ready? Please read. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. One more time, please. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. This is very powerful many people today i tell you the truth have destroyed enviable destinies because of this danger and this demon and this cancer of pride it has brought down kings it has brought down nobles it has brought down men of god as it has such potent power to destroy a man's future pride Hallelujah. When the devil wants to do that, the highest psychological need of all men is the need to be loved, to be valued, to be celebrated. But there are, there is men. The Bible tells us that that state is a state that only leads to destruction. Let me say this sincerely. We live in a celebrity world today. We live in a world of superstars. Nothing wrong with excelling. Get there, it does not matter. They just want to get to a position where the whole world can celebrate them. In ministry, in business, in career, whatever it is. And so people continue to make all kinds of compromises. It does not matter what is done or not done. The most important thing is this fame. I must have it. In ministry, I found out that when you can prophesy, when you can preach well, they may say, people respect you. So it doesn't matter how and where, I must make sure that I get to that position. Most times, when people watch a successful person, there is this, there is this sense of admiration. They look at everything. They look at your designers if you're wearing one. They look at your personal, the car. They look at everything. And most times people just sit and create a world of, of, of ambition and lust from what they are seeing. And they come up with all kinds of false vows and say, I must be like this. I must do this. I must do that. And it becomes a negative motivation. Negative motivation. inordinate affection for the praise of men whether they are lying whether they are flattering you you just want to hear it this was what destroyed lucifer lucifer the son of the morning we're going to look at examples of pride from scripture but this is what destroyed that one cherub that covereth when the lord began to teach me about pride every day till today until tomorrow can i tell you this let me challenge you there are issues that when we are discussing you can easily say ah no 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 when you talk of character and moral excellence you can say oh no that's that's me or that that does not concern me when we talk of witchcraft and manipulation oh that does not concern me when we talk about money and other things oh that does not concern me but the subject of pride and humility there is nobody this, these are the kind of teachings that there is no tell them it's the kind of teaching that when they are done from the preacher himself to everybody you cry and roll before god and say lord help me because pride is a killer it has such penetrating power the most fortified heart it can creep into that heart until it destroys you can i tell you this for the sake of this lecture tonight I separated my angles of discussing pride in two. Number one, spiritual pride. Number two, the pride of life. Let me talk about this. There are the two aspects of pride that I see 
that have almost damaged the lives of people. Why am I teaching this? Out of love. Because this is the condition to access exaltation. You want to be exalted in this kingdom, there is a mystery that controls it. Let's look at spiritual pride. Spiritual pride. In the book of Revelation, the Bible, when John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, please look up. There were seven churches. Now, theologically speaking, those were, they were real churches like that, scattered across Asia Minor. And there were warnings that were given to those churches. But prophetically speaking, it was a message to the entire church. Is that true? And one of the churches, please turn with me to Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14. One of the churches is called the Laodicean church. The Laodicean church received an instruction that is applicable for our lives today and for everyone who wants to remain relevant in the program of God relevant in influence relevant and to consistently be exalted it says and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things saith the Amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God uh huh it says, I know thy works. So he's cautioning them now. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and are neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. 17. Because thou sayest, what made you cold? This is the basis. Thou sayest. I am rich and increase with goods. I have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. This here you see is about the most painful rebuke of all the seven churches. For the rest he will first commend them. You have done this, except this, just work on this. But when it came to the Laodicean church, there was no commendation. It was the rod immediately. Thou sayest, I am rich. I am increased with good. Who does this look like in the Bible? Who made such a statement? Lucifer himself. The Laodicean syndrome is a Luciferian syndrome. I am rich, he says, increased with good. And have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Next verse. We are reading to 19. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mightest be rich. And white raiment that thou mightest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eyes self that thou may see 19 as many as i love wow can you see that there is a special love he had for the laodicean church that was why he didn't even have time to commend anything he just went straight to rebuke them and at the end he said i'm doing this because i love you as many as i love i rebuke and chasten he says be zealous therefore and repent Luke chapter 18 from verse 11. Jesus taught us a very powerful lesson to describe humility and pride. Three or four verses full of truth from the lips of the master himself. Ready? Please look up. The Pharisees stood and prayed to us. Jesus is giving um, a, a parable now to explain something. And he spoke about two men. One a Pharisee, one an ordinary person. The Pharisee stood and prayed to us with himself. God, I thank thee, he said, that I am not as the other men are. This is the man praying now. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican, he's praying. Next verse. I fast twice in a week. Everybody says spiritual pride. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast saying God be merciful to me a sinner 
14 i tell you this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased and he that humbled himself shall be exalted jesus is teaching spiritual pride can i tell you this i can tell you by experience and i can tell you from scripture if god does not help you spiritual growth and spiritual excellence can turn and tilt you to the other side of the pendulum and bring your destruction when you begin to access revelation and insight when god begins to prosper your spiritual work and us i tell you the, <clears throat> Pride, if, if God does not help you to create a system where you cry before him daily, has destroyed many men of God, respectfully speaking. This has destroyed many great leaders. This has destroyed many great business spiritual progress. And many times, you can grow in revelation, grow in power to the point that you are no longer with us, step by step. And he's still helping us today spiritual pride the moment you feel you are the only one god is using apostle joshua selman it is only in koinonia god is blessing people apostle joshua selman you know while i was preparing this message i had to put my head and rest and think i have said this to you and i say it out of every sense of responsibility truly without exaggeration now it's even more i manage an average of say 800 plus text messages in a day and many of them like this apostle of the most high god i have searched men of god are you if you actually believe that thing let, i'm talking to myself now if i actually believe that thing i'm not only stupid but i'm under an attack as as funny and childish as what i'm saying is there are some of you who will believe it absolutely and go out of your way to create systems that reinforce those kinds of things. Many of us have gathered psychophants in our lives today because they have mastered us that this is what we want to hear. Even if you are entering the pit, you want people who gather around you. Once they can massage your ego, they have access to your life, access to your inner circle until you, they destroy you and they will turn back and show people that this is where he died. Listen to me. You've heard me say this. You know you are being transformed by the Holy Ghost when there is humility connected to your growth. The moment you begin to trade humility for revelation, you are in trouble. Now, this, I say this with every sense of love and respect. This is one of the greatest fear for my generation of ministers. You see it in Africa. One of the biggest mistakes, especially with the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in Africa generally and world over, is that the little that God has done and is doing with our lives is so garnished with a lot of pride. It even damages the beautiful thing that is there. That is not even much relative to what God wants to do. Are we together? Chances are that because of what God is doing in a ministry like this and how God continues to glorify himself, we can go back and begin to destroy ourselves with that sense of pride. How do you know you are walking in pride? When you believe, listen to me, when you believe that there are certain things you are the only one who can do and the only one who can bring is the mistake of Elijah. Elijah came to God and said, God, every other person has deserted you. Every other person does not like you. I am the only one. That's a nonsense. What are you saying? There are 7,000 others. How many preachers today, we preachers, I don't say them, we preachers, how many of us preachers today actually sit down and believe that without us, God's purposes will fail? Look at that level of pride. There are people who stand and speak as if every other person has backsliding. Every other person does not love the Lord. We must be careful. There is destruction that we are programming. The one who built the church is still alive. And his jealousy will make sure he defends his work to the end. Can I tell you this? 
as a man of God, I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting people. And God many times opens my eyes and I'm able to see these people. They themselves do not know how mighty they are in the spirit. I shared with you a story one time that I was pre preaching at a PFN crusade in Kano. And I was calling people out by word of knowledge, ministering to people, you know, people were watching with wonder, the anointing and all kinds of things. And then I called this woman out. And when the woman came out, she was an intercessor. And then she told me that every 15 days, she finishes her Bible, a house her Bible, 15 days without fail. And yet they are not on air. Yet they are not the Joshua Selmans who sit in front. And yet we can have the audacity to believe that we are the only ones God is using. Not so. My brothers, God has a mighty army. Some of them mighty and greater than the Joshua Selmans you celebrate. Nobody knows them yet. Some of them are hiding in the school of the spirit. God is using our own life to teach them lessons and train them. We must have the maturity, the wisdom, and the spirituality to know this. Are you learning something tonight? Yes. Spiritual pride. People bully one another across the body of Christ today with rema, revelation. Many people, this is what led them into divination and some of these things now. Pray from prayer groups, you go to different campuses now, you see things that make you afraid. Everybody is trying to search for anything. Once there is Greek, Hebrew, and Latin, and you conjoin, then the spiritual pride that comes from account of prayer prowess. Once I can pray two hours, three hours, four hours, you can bully others to make it look you are not spiritual. <sighs> then crowd. Once you have crowd inside and outside, we are the only ones God is using. Brothers and sisters, it is not true. It is an attack from the pit of hell. There is such a thing as spiritual pride. The more you see the glory of God, can I tell you this? The more you are exposed to God, I'm telling you the more you see your inadequacy before Him and the need to remain humble. Many times when I enter and I come to sit and I watch people looking at me in my mind, I'm just saying, Oh God, Someone was at a pastor's conference. It's a story that I heard years ago. They were at a pastor's conference. Ministers were praying. And our father in the Lord, Baba Deboe, was there. And when it was time to pray, mass prayer, everybody was praying. And then the man had the opportunity to lie down not too far, as he said, from Baba Deboe. And pastors were praying, Lord, the grace on this ministry must come upon my life. I'm tired of 300 members. I'm tired of others' power. And when he came close, for more than one hour or so, he said, all that Baba Deboy was saying is, Mercy, O oh God. Mercy, O oh God. Mercy, O oh God. That's how you know people who have grown. Others who just came, Lord, fire. Lord, bring partners now. Why do I have this quality of sheep? Bring people who can help me and, and change this and stop this work from being hard. Someone else is crying and saying, Lord, mercy, keep me to the end. Mercy, the humility it takes to finish. Can I tell you this? It is a caution that God gave me. And I continue to obtain grace from God to stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit. That as He opens new graces and new vistas of spiritual reality that we are patient with people today many people come who are just starting ministry and they come apostle and sometimes they almost want to worship you can i tell you this spiritual pride works in two angles there is the one you create the people who praise you by yourself you praise yourself but there, there are others you will not create it but when you see it you will sap that you will enjoy it like squeezing an orange until there is nothing left. It's still pride. There are times that you have to go out of your way to thank them and say thank you for this. But please be careful. There are things people want to do in my life today. If I'm to allow people to do everything they want to do in my life, it will almost become another religion. People will now almost worship Joshua Selman. Ah, may I not live to see that day oh. In the name of Jesus Christ.
looking at me now and following online many of you the devil is already programming this spiritual pride that's what has driven many people to go on 40 days dry 10 days dry you ask them why they tell you no we started ministry with these guys to, i can't remain like this and you think it's a very nice motivation no i can't be some of you are listening to me some of you that's what even brought you here and god is looking at the corruption in your heart there's nothing wrong with prayer and fasting don't get me wrong but that that motif is already dead it's already gone spiritual pride why do you think people go to dabble into all sorts of demonic things it is because people are looking for a name spiritual pride take it down for me let me sing that scene that song the more I know you the more I want to know you Jesus more of you the more I know you the more I want to know you Jesus more of you the more I see you the more I want to see you Jesus more of you listen historically speaking do you know and I say this with every sense of respect one of God's generals I may not mention his name because I'm speaking to a global audience but one of these generals that was one of the things that brought him down he was a mighty general of God used of God powerfully but he got to a point where people told him you are one of these prophets Elijah specifically and when they said that for a while he said no 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 our glory be to God I don't mean the spirit of Elijah Elijah incarnate you are that Elijah that revelation say would come again can I tell you this in the state of pride there is nothing you will not believe that's why it's good to ask God for mercy I want more of you I want more of you Jesus the more I know you the more I want to know you Jesus more of you listen and eventually they now made him believe that he was Elijah and after a while he started believing it and he went and saw the regalia at that time there was no social media so you would not really know what God was doing at the other side of the world it was at that time that the woman that we call Maria Woodward Eater God now lifted her and when that man heard that God was using someone outside of him, he persecuted that woman seriously. Number one, that she was a woman. Number two, who are you for God to use you? I'm the only one that God is using here. And thank God he served God, but he did not finish well. The things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning. So that we, through the comfort of scripture, some of these people have allowed their scars to be seen not to condemn them we honor them in life and even in death for the contribution that they brought but there are lessons for us to learn there is nobody destroyed who stands with the potential of destruction keep going as god is lifting you spiritually apostle joshua selman you know sometimes i watch with shock and wonder it's almost it's even embarrassing as i'm saying it now please forgive me but I mean, people can give you this godlike. I know it's a sincere way to honor you. There's nothing wrong with that. Except that sometimes people can give you all this description and all this spiritual paraphernalia. And if you are not careful, you will fall into it with joy. Joshua Selman. I can stand now and begin to pray and the power of God moves in this place and people are blessed 
spiritual pride. On account of the progress you are making in the spirit. On account of the fact that God, it has so pleased him by his sheer mercy and grace. To lift you to a position where you now represent the voice of God to a generation. I warn myself every day, God can do without you. God can do without you. Mr. Man, you are a man. You are only of God. Lord, if you're lifting someone in this city, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're changing someone in this city, don't do it without me. I submit to you by God, there are many men of God, there are many people who need a retreat fast to go back and break down before God and say, my maker and my king, Everything I ever have, it came from you. And thank God for the spirit of revelation. Thank God for the ability to minister healing. Thank God for the nations who are hearing what we are doing. But Lord, I pray, the pride that comes based on spiritual achievements, may it never, never, never. While you are saying it, you will look like a fool. But you are already signing your relevance for the next move of God. See, this is why you see a lot of people used by God. And then a time comes, you see another move of God. They are still alive. And yet you see, this is not backsliding. It just looks like God says, no, no, no. I can't make you do with this again. Some of you here are leaders over small prayer groups. You are already copying all kinds of nonsense. It doesn't matter even if it's from me. We have to be careful the things we are learning. Pride that destroys people. It is as a result of this pride that dishonor has crept into the body. Everybody is correcting everybody. Someone who has not even started ministry. Standing at the back of the tree and calling fathers and insulting everybody spiritual pride till today when i have the honor and the privilege of meeting any of our fathers in the faith or anyone who has gone ahead it does not matter what they are saying i sit down quietly as if i do not know anything in ministry i submit to you brothers and sisters and people of god the man talking to you is not stupid by the grace of God, forgive me if I sound arrogant. I have seen honor. I have seen the grace of God. I have seen Jesus. I have stood before kings. I know what it means to have spiritual progress. God has helped me. But, the way up is to remain on your knees. Many of you are simple. You are not humble. Simplicity is not humility. Humility is not refusing to acknowledge what God has done in your life. No. No. I remember one time years ago when I finished that preaching, someone sent me a text and said, I've been calling you and you did not pick. I said, look, they said I'm humble, not stupid. Do you know my activities? Don't, don't let people blackmail you emotionally just because you said you are humble. No. But can I tell you the truth? My brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. Pride based on spiritual achievement God forbid but if I die today I sleep and I do not wake up it will not change what God is doing on earth the church is marching on the church is marching on the gates of hell shall not prevail Never get to a point in your life where you believe God cannot do without you. And he says, really? No. 
it is a privilege beyond imagination to be part of God's program. It is a privilege to help build and bless people. It is a privilege to be granted the gift of influence and access. It is, it is a privilege. There are many things today that I know from this scripture. I did not study it. It's the spirit of revelation that brought it. I cannot take credit for it. There are things that I told you I have seen people who have fasted and prayed more than me. Years ago, a gentleman, most times when people are fasting, sometimes I join them and round it up with them. There was a gentleman who fasted for 400 days, 6 to 6. I rounded up the 400th day with him. And yet that person did not carry any power. More than the spiritual activities we are doing, believe me, it is the mercy of God. I know people who have studied more books about church growth than me. I know people who have gone to different theological seminaries. I know people who have had the opportunity. They have... So the little and the bits that God does in and through our lives, as we ascend this mountain spiritually, may we ever remain humble. And I'm saying this to those who are also leaders in this ministry or leaders all around. We have to learn this. Men can clap for you, that is important. But you must get to a point where you say, this is enough. My life is to see Jesus glorified. Because you see, there's something the anointing and the glory of God does upon a man. It makes it look like you are not human again. And when people stand in awe of that glory, that majesty, the wisdom that comes from God, many times they begin to look for sincere ways of expressing honor and appreciation to you you are the one who needs to be wise to know when it has gone beyond honor into something else and to lovingly draw that line and keep that line drawn are we together everybody say spiritual pride please shout it say spiritual pride god is speaking to us right now there are people who have not been patient with younger ministers as they rise because of pride I've told you this when you are mentoring and raising people part of the responsibility of fatherhood is that you must be able to take a lot of nonsense from people as they are growing you must know and be patient with people the same way God was patient with us spiritual pride revelation rema healing prophecy Africa I speak to you by the voice of the Spirit men and women of god across this nation and across this continent may we obtain grace from god to be humble some of these godlike things we continue to do we need to pray that god will have mercy on us otherwise we'll keep falling like rain one by one at the instance of pride pride based on revelation pride based on oratory Pride based on prophetic prowess, pride based on the miraculous, pride based on wisdom, pride based on all of these things, anything spiritual, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord watches over a city, the watchmen watch it but in vain, it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. So you want to keep growing spiritually, you want to keep accessing supernatural levels of power. Let every lifting that God brings in your life culminate to a greater level of humility. Lord, I am so honored that you have granted me this access. Sometimes when I'm sitting before the Lord in the night and some of these revelations come, tears just come out of my eyes and I say, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have been merciful to me and I'm grateful. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. spiritual pride the second area of pride is god helping us hmm. tonight's message is hard bar just receive it with love 
it is it is the way we make the maker is making men the second aspect of pride is called the pride of life please write it down first john chapter 2 and verse 16 what is the pride of life the pride of life is the self-exaltation you see that that on that inordinate feeling of importance that 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 not confidence self-exaltation based on obvious achievements the pride of life is for people who have achieved something tangible if you have not achieved anything you can have pride but not the pride of life the pride of life is the self-glorification that is derived in the presence of obvious achievements you have results to show for it first john 2 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The pride of life. Jeremiah chapter 9 from verse 23 to 24. The prophet speaking by the Spirit admonishes us. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. It does not mean to not celebrate your wisdom. Uh -uh. You know what pride is? The refusal to acknowledge God as the basis for your success. The refusal, the ashamedness. The moment you are embarrassed to let people see Jesus as the basis for your victory. You want to so enjoy that spotlight. You don't want God to interrupt this spotlight. Lord, I've waited all my life to shine. And now that the spotlight is on me, Jesus, get out of the way. Let me not have any interruption. Let me enjoy and savor the moment. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man uh -huh, glory in his riches. What is the pride of the believer? 24. But let him that glory yet glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me that i am the lord which exercise loving kindness judgment righteousness in the earth for in these things i delight saith the lord everyone say the pride of life this is where all other groups now come in politicians successful people businessmen god intends to lift us but we must be careful our world has a very superior architecture they can design a house where you will die when you rise they consciously we may not know have arrived we call it i don't know what i've arrived that's the one i know are we together count you know what made the rich man foolish read the bible it was not his money the problem was not the rich the problem was the fool you know what made him foolish? He built his bands and stored them. And God said, today your soul is required of you. My father used to tell us many years ago that no matter who you are, no matter where you go to, make sure you fight pride. I think it's one of the most, most outspoken virtue that he pounded in our heads growing. Pride. May God bless him for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Pride. My power and my might. I am this. I made this happen. You hear people make all kinds of statements. I've taught you that everything comes from God through men. Pride is when men want to become the source of everything. I can lift you. I can do this. I can frustrate you. Ah. We have to be careful. There is a God that sits in heaven. The monarch of the universe. So whilst you achieve all that you achieve using these keys that we keep sharing. As God lifts you. As God blesses you. As God, as God honors you. Make sure that you unashamedly stand before God and before men. 
and tell them the Lord is the doer of these things. You hear the testimonies week in, week out. All of the mighty and marvelous things. If God has done anything good in and through this life and in and through this ministry and in and through any life here, He deserves the glory. So when men clap for you, appreciate them, but be sure to point them to the one who is the doer of every good thing. And God says, you had a chance to stand and savour this moment and you are directing people to me. You are ready for the next level. Let's go. And he will lift you fearfully. Help those under the anointing there, please. Fearfully to another level. This is one of the secrets and one of the graces that I prayed for and I continue to pray for. Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Remember he gave them a warning. Koinonia is, is the Lord speaking to you tonight. He gave a warning. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. In not keeping his commandments. And his judgments and his touches which I commanded this day. Next verse. Lest when thou hast eaten and are full. You see something happens to people when they are not hungry again. Hunger is not the best. But it has a way of making you to remember your maker. Is that true? When you are trekking, it's easy to pray in tongues while you are trekking. When you don't have a job, you have something to wake up in the night and pray for. In the name of Jesus, this spirit, you fought my father minus me. You can pray till morning. When you are trusting God for some breakthrough. But when this happens... There is something about men being full. Remember the five, five, the five loaves and two fish? They were hungry and they listened. What happened when they were full? They threw everything and went away. There's no record in the Bible of them telling Jesus, thank you. They left. He said, no problem, leave them. Gather my crumbs for me. Twelve baskets. The same people who were once hungry. Less when thou hast eaten and art full. One level. And hast built houses and dwelt therein. Next verse. And when your herds and flocks multiply, and thy silver and gold is multiplied. You see the key word there? Multiplied. Multiplied. And all that thou hast is multiplied. Then thy heart shall be lifted up. That's the Bible's definition of pride. When your heart is lifted up, no longer your hands again. It used to be your hands lifted up. But when you become proud, your heart is lifted up. And thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Uh -huh. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, and where there was no water. Who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint? 16. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna? which thy fathers knew not that he may humble thee that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end 17 and thou say in thy heart the classic definition of pride the pride of life my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this world my connection is what gave me this electoral victory my business connection i am such an astute businessman you will tell yourself i am such a great preacher I am... let it not be that when this has happened and men continue to clap for you you say my power and my might pride therefore is the refusal to acknowledge god before men as the doer of every good thing in your life either directly or indirectly usual passion an unusual passion for the attention of men an unusual passion for self-glorification a desire for men to keep singing your sing your praises or to sing it to yourself is pride that th there is such a craving for attention once the spotlight is not on you there is trouble it's unusual craving for the spotlight to be the person there it doesn't matter what else let the light the darkness be on everybody but once it is on me that's it 
maybe I just described someone here. Maybe you are outside following online from whatever nation. And the Lord is saying, this is you. Don't fight what he's saying. The goal of God's word is to purify the washing of the water by the word. The craving. There are people who go out of their way to make sure that they ring bells to make sure everybody knows what is they are doing. You buy a new shoe, the whole world must know you bought a new shoe. Is that true? You bought a new Bible, they must first see how the old one was very old. Then they see the new one to show you are spiritual. Some of these things are unnecessary. Please hear me, it's a hard teaching tonight, but it's the Holy Ghost speaking to you. Symptoms of pride. What is the symptom of pride? Embarrassment. Listen, the moment you begin to become embarrassed to acknowledge God publicly is a symptom of pride. Before God lifted you, you could kneel down and lie down and roll on the floor. But right now, you, are, you make sure you are calculated. I, I can't let this my, this my expensive cloth on the ground. Even God knows that it's not cheap. The ones that I bought it, the amount that I know he saw me roll on the ground with that one. And God says, this is for me. The 24 elders take up their golden crown. Not, not rubber crown. Not metallic crown. Golden crown. They drop it on the ground and they say, holy, holy, holy. That's what keeps them as elders. So the day they stop doing that, they are no longer elders. That's what keeps them as elders. Holy. To him who sits on the throne. They don't worship everybody in heaven. The one to be worshipped is clear. To him who sits on the throne. The pride of life. Nothing wrong with getting all the good things. Can you stand in front of your mansion and roll on the ground before God and say, Lord, you are the doer of this. Let men, devils and angels know that if it had not been the Lord by my side, now may Israel say, God is increasing you in ministry and you stand before men. I'm not talking of shake, sh faking and carrying a form of pride whereas uh, humility and your heart is proud. No, that you can sincerely, you see, people can discern the purity of what you are doing. You can stand here and be saying, oh God, you are the doer and people know that it's just talk in your heart. You are saying, I'm the doer. There is absolutely nothing that you see happening in this house by the grace of God that would not happen if I'm not here. It's a privilege to receive and to spearhead what God is doing. It's a revelation we must have. Some of us, money has brought a lot of pride. There's nothing wrong with having money. But many times, pride money i have millions i have estates thank god congratulations we appreciate and respect you for paying that price to have this but can i tell you 10 minutes without breathing and all that thing it is wicked people who fight over it while you are gone Listen, realize the brevity of life outside of the help of god it is it is when you wake up in the morning you can think of doing real estate it is when you wake up in the morning you can think of preaching. If he did not wake me this morning, there will be no rema. There will be no revelation. There will be no koinonia. So you can say, thank you Jesus before men. And they say, why are you falling in our hand? We know that you are an intelligent person. You are a professor par excellence. And you say, the fact that my brain is working. I don't make the brain walk. I only read through a brain that is walking. The one who made the brain walk is the one who deserves the glory. Can I tell you this? Many of us, I'm sharing with you a secret. That's why you found out that you stopped rising a long time ago. Go back to that place where you started with God. Roll on the floor and say, Jesus, you are the one who I repent. Forgive me for the foolishness of forgetting about you. I started thinking about my titles. 
every time I see anything good, whether it's a text, whether whatever it is that people do, I just stand before him and I say, Lord, you know, you see my heart. I never had plans for anything. If you never blessed me, if you never gave me ministry, I am still grateful. But that you have done this, I return back. I'm telling you sincerely, and I'm only saying this because I'm teaching on this. I return back every time from the miracle service or from any service. Once I'm done and all things are done, I get down on my knees. And I say, Father, you have done it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. While I'm saying it, text messages are coming from all over the world. Mighty man of God. I say, Lord, that is dedicated to you. They are just trying to say you are great. What they are trying to say is Galatians 1.24 And they glorified God in me. But Lord, I'm like a host. As that glory is passing, may no devil trap it and kill me down there. Mm -mm. Let it pass and go to him who is due all the glory. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh. Please help those on that All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. One more time. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hear me. No matter who you are, and no matter what God gives you, if you are flying a private jet, you are not the wind that is holding the jet. You only had money to buy it from a man who manufactured it. I'm not being sarcastic, I'm only challenging you. If you win an election, as you sit down on that seat, while people are clapping, just tell them thank you. Excuse them out. Lock the door of your office and roll on the ground. Say, Lord, I knew that I would have lost this election. You are the doer. And God says, because you have done this, I vow that you will remain here. And anybody that tries to fight you, I will scatter them into pieces. God helps you as a man of God. Every Sunday you come, if you see one member that comes to share what God has to say, give God thanks. Oh. If I come here and I find ten people, I will preach with the same fire and the same passion. I stand before the God who called me and I'm telling you this. It's not about the crowd. No. It is an honor to talk to one person about Jesus to make an altar call and to be in partnership with the Holy Ghost to save lives. Listen to me. The car you have in your house came by His mercy. The house you have came by His mercy. I have houses in Europe. I have houses in America. Congratulations. There are people who have houses but they are mad today. Their brains are not coordinated again to even travel there. As the, the houses they have everywhere, their prayer is for survival. Lord, let me leave. Can I tell you this? The most dangerous thing about pride is not that you will be fought. The most dangerous thing about pride is who will fight you. The Bible says God resisted. If men fight you, you can go to God and say, My father and my maker, men are disturbing me. If demons fight you, you can go to God and say, This three months again. You can use his name. If God fights you, will you use his name to cast him? The name of the Lord is the highest. And if the one, the owner of the name is fighting you, every other altar will join him to fight you too. Can I tell you this? Let me tell you how you know God is fighting a man. Everything fights him too. You, when everything is fighting you, I tear it from me. The hand of God is there resisting you. Everything, favor will fight you. Good things will fight you. Prophecy will fight you. It is dangerous for God to be against a man.
God, you gave me this beauty. I'm a beautiful woman, beautiful lady. And God says, nonsense. If you die, your beauty will not resurrect you. You acknowledge him. Lord, I am a great man. It's because I'm intelligent. That's why companies are calling on me. And God says, nonsense. Ah. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. I share with you a secret. It's one of the graces at work in this house. Sometimes we see people say, Apostle, you are humble, you are simple. And I say, my humility, it didn't come from my background. Just like that. It's a revelation. I am aware that God can fight a man. It is dangerous to be at the other side of that battle. Rewards of humility. We're about to pray. Please sit down and write this down. Rewards of humility. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 4. Please never forget this scripture. Can we read it together? Proverbs 22 and verse 4. Are you ready? One to read. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. One more time. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor. Are you seeing that riches is not the same as honor? You can have riches and not have honor. You can have riches and honor and not have life. There is a relationship between untimely death and pride. There is a relationship between humility and longevity. James chapter 4 from verse 6. Then we go to verse 10. James 4. But he giveth more grace. One of the blessings there. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Please go to verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, Koinonia, and he shall lift you up. That's where the secret is. Koinonia, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Apostle Joshua Selman, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Man of God, businessman, politician, whoever and wherever, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and there is a reward for it. He will lift you. So when you see a people who you never see their end, they have mastered this ladder, this lift called humility. What is humility? It is not denying what God has done in your life. Vocally, publicly, intentionally, continually as the basis that when it's all said and done, more than your intellect, more than your business as the doer of every good thing. That's humility. So you can stand before your estates. You can stand before all of your credentials and all, all of that. You can stand before the prosperity. The bank accounts carrying the billions world over. Wonderful. They are only profitable when you stand and say, Lord, it is not unto these things, but unto you. I lift my hands and I lift my voice. And I will let the world know that it is because of you that these things are before me. We are not ashamed to tell the world today, world over, that Jesus is the reason for what we call koinonia today. Joshua Selman is nothing without him. Koinonia is nothing without him. It's one thing to have the ability to preach and teach and heal and minister. But it's another thing for God to draw people from world over to come and listen and to submit to the grace of God committed to you. Man of God, never get to a point in your life where you become too big to acknowledge Jesus. Thank God for all of these little things here and there, the security that help. For I, I tell you, I have a confession. You ask the protocol department and the security people, this is my fight with them. They are doing their job professionally. But if it's up to me, I will enter this place, you will not know. If I have a way of just entering there to carry my Bible, once it's time... 
I just appear here and preach and disappear. I will do it with joy. It's just that there are some levels in life, no matter what happens, there's nothing you can do about it. I know that while some of you watch all these things, some of you are admiring it. And that's what drives you. Be careful. God is warning you now. God is warning you now. God is warning you now. You are laughing, but God is serious. God is warning you now. Read yourself from all of these lusts. You will be celebrated for sure. Nations will call you blessed for sure. But let them be the one to clap while you point them to Jesus. Forever Jesus will remain glorified in my life. Glorified in this ministry. And glorified in your life also. That when men look at you and say from whence cometh this lifting. Others are saying there is a casting down. What is happening to your business that you are rising in leaps and bounds. I just hear you open a new office. You don't just laugh and say well say it again. No. Don't say they know. Tell them. You are the doer. Jesus I acknowledge you. And they say please leave those spiritual things. What did you do? And tell them no 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 no. I will not leave it. This is how it happened. I don't know how it happened for others. What is the secret to this? Your peace. Your children are well behaved. Everybody is respectful. Who says because ah, they know me? Go and ask them how disciplined their father and their mother are. No. no. Am I wasting your time? Can I tell you this? You've heard me say it. When I had this encounter with the Lord. Where he taught me the lifting power of humility. This was what the Lord told me. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. This is what God told me. Ah, for men to see you, that's, that's fine. John chapter 3 and verse 30 must be the lesson that everybody takes home today. As far as humility is concerned. He must increase, but I must decrease. Decrease does not mean diminish. Decrease does not mean go back. No. That you exalt him. How do you know you are humble? When men look at you, they remember Jesus, not you. When men look at you, they know. They see all the miracles. They see the signs and the wonders. They see God lifting you. And all they can say is, Lord, you are a wonder. When men look at you and it's only your praises they sing, something is wrong with your approach. For everything God has done in this life, for everything God has done in this ministry, truly to Him be the glory. To Him be the glory. To Him be the honor. No man on earth should give glory to Himself. All the glory. Listen. Let me show you what humility does. You stand here, Lord, you are the lifter of my heart. I give you all the praise. And God says, you have done this at this level. You don't have a car. You don't have a bike. You are not doing anything. And you are acknowledging me. Let's go higher. You don't know that the, the ultimate goal is to take you there. Once you are here, people say, my God, you are already at this level. And the Holy Spirit to say, remember what you did when you were here. Do it again. He's giving and pride. You say, I'm comfortable. I mean, now you can see me. And some people remain here forever till they find out they're already down here again. But some other people stand here. And while people are looking at you, you are even, you are distracted. You are not distracted by what they are doing. They call you all kinds of names. Daddy apostle whatever thank god for those things but your attention is with jesus are you ready for this he lifts you to the next level you became a governor you became a senator you became a man of god now he trusted you one branch two branch two branches three branches he now helped you and you say lord even at this point may the nation see you through my life 
and men look at you and say be honest jerry enjoy this thing enjoy this moment and sometimes you can be distracted and then he calls you back i have other people who need to rise if you want to make this space vacant i will fight you to make it vacant and leave others and you say no i remember how you brought me and he will still find you in the night rolling and he says you are ready he will move you to another one when he moves you you will not be alone you will find other people that he moved there too they will now start distracting you let's focus on laughing at those who are down and you tell them i don't know how you got here but me i know how god brought me here and i will not be distracted many times when you are up here it looks like there are other people below you let's gossip let's mock let's push them let's fight anybody who wants to come down there are people who will remain here for 30 years until they start going down by the time they are 50 they are back here you say i thought i used to know you here they say condition is a lie the part of the just is as a shining light when your tomorrow becomes greater becomes worse than your yesterday it is pride a man's tomorrow should not be like this no you know people who are working in humility because you never see them at the last level you saw them you are right here at this point people are already calling you things papa if you are in ministry you are mentoring people everybody they are just blessing you inviting you around the whole world you are in hotels you are having all kinds of cars jeeps you are enjoying everything zero and then one night if god wants to help you he will call you and say my son i'm still waiting for you where we used to meet before don't distract me oh god the spotlight is on me this was what i looked for growing up this was what i wanted people said i would not make it now that i've made it let me stand so that i can savor the moment and he says my son we still have other heights to climb don't stop here but there are others may you be part of them tonight in my life be glorified be glorified in my life be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. While you are busy singing this song and living this song with your life, men will open their eyes and find you here. You are standing with kings and nations. And they say, we used to know him. Ah, humility has a lifting power. It will shift your background, shift your gender, shift what men said. They can say while you rise. They can talk while you are lifted. I tell you this. The end of a man who is truly humble cannot be predicted by any mortal man on earth. There is no prophet, there is no apostle whose eye can see as far as a man with humility can go. Only God can tell the end of a humble man. Just when you think he has attained that, God now lifts him again to another season. Hear me? We're about to pray. The Lord brought you to church tonight to show you that there is a secret. Men do not just rise. God is the lifter of men. Are you ready to pray? Let me give you one key. You have to write this down. One key. What is the key to humility? The key to humility is found in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Please, our global family, the body of Christ, as many who will follow this, do not forget. There are eight words that I want you to remember for the rest of your life as the key to humility. 
the A part. But thou shall remember the Lord thy God. But thou shall remember not just the Lord thy God. Hear me. One of the greatest keys to humility is remembrance. Remember where God took you from. And remember who took you. If you can remember where God took you from. And you can remember who took you. You have mastered the key to beating life at its game. Believe me. When David stood before Goliath. Goliath said, am I a dog that you are coming to me with this sling? He said, God who delivered me. I remember success has a way of eroding your memory that's why there are certain pains and certain things that you are around you is looking for favor and you can never hear people who tell you the truth again times will come you will have to be your own counselor let yesterday be your counselor remember how God lifted you man of God remember once upon a time you had no church no reputation politician remember once upon a time you trekked without shoes every time men forget they stop moving forward remember 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 this is what I do all the time let me speak to someone here keep the memory of your pain now you will need it tomorrow don't waste your pain your pain is a miracle the scar listen the injury on your hand today is what will keep you when you sit on the throne till today jesus still has the scar the scar reminds him of his love for man again every time you see that scar you remember every time god did wondrous things to the nation of israel listen to me he gave them instructions he says find a way of archiving this if your children ask you and say why are you doing this tell them oh israel you forgot too soon that for 430 years you were in the land of slavery now you began to build idols one of the ways that god brings men to humility when they forget him is to lift his hand and you will see what the devil does in your life every time people were proud he gave them over to their enemies it's in your bible africa could this be why we are going through what we are going through Nigeria, could this be what we are going through? If my people who are called by my name, what's the first thing they do? Not pray. Not pray. We have been praying. We have been praying. Humble themselves. It is not because the arm of the Lord is too short. Man of God, it does not take God anything to expand your ministry. It does not take anything for the anointing you desire. If it's prosperity, I dare to tell you there are enough destiny helpers, enough ideas, enough systems and structures for God to lift you. Read your Bible and see the lifting power of God. When you become at the center stage of your life, forget about the hand of God. I remember, remember your goodness. I remember, remember your love. I remember, remember your faithfulness. I remember, remember your grace. I remember a time in my life when I was going to preach. No bike, no nothing, it was raining. I remember trekking in the rain while the rain was pouring on me. I was praying in tongues and going for the meeting. And look what he's done today. And then you forget. Keep that memory. That's what God will use to remind you. Oh, Bilonia, remember that one time you were soaking Gary. And you drink and say to die. To the Lord be all the glory. But today, you have chains of restaurants around the world. Oh, let it never enter your heart. Oh God, anything you give me, let it stay outside me. 
sit in your position alone jealously guarded by my passion for you don't think i wasted your time tonight i gave you the key to the next level some of you as a company you need to do this go back to god tomorrow when you go to work tell the people to excuse you a bit lock that door and kneel down and say father you may even need to pray your local dialect maybe it will give you room to express it more and say god of heaven you are the one who has shown me mercy forgive me if for any reason i joined an association of unwise people and i started forgetting you in the name of celebrating success be careful with some of these groups and associations they, are, they may not be wrong but we must be careful because some of them mislead us into feeling embarrassed that is the lord once upon a time you could not afford a good shoe but now you can even buy the whole boutique oh please do not forget thou shall remember remember yesterday and remember the lord remember yesterday and remember the lord take this message and give anybody you know and you love sincerely use it to train your children if god has blessed you and you are a blessed man with substance sit your children down don't just show them the money tell them the stories tell them young boys you have the privilege to eat anything you eat today and travel around the world but it was not always like that i came from a family where we had to use well to use well to draw water out god began to help me if the only thing i give you people is money i've destroyed you this is a mistake and i say it finally before we pray most leaders in africa and nigeria are making this mistake we are not giving those who look up to us the stories we are only giving them the rewards so a young man now does not know that ministry needs stamina and endurance and pain why because he just came and received impartation received maybe three or five cars and had his mentor or spiritual father come and stand as a leverage to speak for him an increase is coming and he can look and be laughing at people and say shame on you five years no membership because of that leverage pain is a gift make sure you give those you really love don't inflict pain on them the testimony of your pain i mean share it with them let them know that once upon a time you fasted and prayed that this anointing did not just drop because you read your bible and tell them the privilege you now enjoy do not abuse it carelessness comes when process is not known when people ignore process the result is carelessness i'm going to give us two three minutes i don't know how you are going to cry before god i will do my own here the next two three minutes you are just going to say lord if ever my heart is lifted forgive me show me mercy tonight and grant me grace pray you don't have to kneel down or lie down just cry before your maker please no movement around this is a serious moment go ahead and pray remember in one minute remember where his majesty took you from their man of god their apostle and their prophet their pastor and their evangelist their politician their academician 
Dear millionaire, dear billionaire, dear elder statesman, dear father, dear parent, remember where he took you from, dear student, dear great man. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for your goodness. Thank you. If you have to cry, cry. If you have to sing, sing. Just a minute or two and we're done. Let him know that I am still your boy, oh God. I'm still the one you lifted. I'm still the one you helped. I'm still the one you blessed. I'm here to say how much I love you. I'm here to say how much I adore you. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. By your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you solve them. But I'm here to say I love you. I'm here to say I adore you. I'm here to say I love you. Lord, as men look at our lives, may they see you. As men look at our lives, oh, may they see you. It is easy to see the glamour. It is easy to see the anointing. It is easy to see the spirituality and the results. It is easy to see the achievements. But Lord, tonight, we declare... That we love you. We're wrapping up. And with our hands lifted up, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoice. With our hands lifted up to the sky, and the world wonders why. We just tell them we love in our King. Oh, we just tell them we love in our King. Now I can pray for you. You don't have to kneel, please just stand. Now I can pray for this grace that brings exaltation. I have seen it. I know it works. Believe me, there is a grace that lifts. There is a grace that grants you access to kings, to systems, to structures. There is a grace that enthrones beyond your wildest imagination. Many of us here have been lifted. We have tasted of honor and glory. We have seen the help of God. But I submit to you that at any level there is still more. There is still more. There is still more. Lord, may we never forget, may the nation see that you are the lifter, the blesser, the anointer, the one who prospers. May the mundane things in this life never get into us to turn our hearts and our minds away from you. May we be ever conscious. And now I pray for everyone here under the sound of my voice. I pray for our global family. I pray for you who is a man of God who has been trusting God for lifting. 
I pray for you who is a businessman who is at a defining moment. You've been praying for lifting. I pray for politicians, members of parliament, those in government, those in ministry, those trusting God to lift even financially. There is grace. I have seen this grace work. I have seen it work wonders. And therefore in the name of Jesus Christ, as instructed by God, I stretch my hands over everyone here. The grace that lifts, the grace that exalts, even through humility, may that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. Hear me. For some of you, this is the beginning of the fulfillment of prophecy. All the things you saw in your dreams, God was waiting for you to hear this sermon before the angels are activated. Because where God is taking you, you need this message to remain. Therefore, I declare, now that you have heard it, I call upon my God and your God. Father, in a fearful way, begin to lift people from tonight. Spiritual lifting. Financial lifting. Intellectual lifting. Ministerial lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Access to systems. Access to the hearts of kings. May that grace come upon you now. Never will you call for help and be left alone again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone who is due for promotion of all sorts and has been kept by reason of any kapatos kalibra kato shegete brendeke palakusia in the name that is above all names, may this grace come upon you and lift you to a sign and a wonder. Those in ministry, co laborers in the gospel, I stand in agreement with you that in the name of Jesus, everything that has taunted the growth of your churches, your ministries, your ministerial platforms, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, receive this grace and rise. Some of us have been at the same level for a long time. You've not gone down, but you've not gone up either. I pray for you, by this grace, ye have encompassed this mountain long enough. Rise up now in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Any spirit that has taken advantage of pride in your life to keep you down. Help that gentleman. Any spirit that has cooperated with your ignorance in this area. Some of you may have been arrogant based on this psychological thing. It's just your passion to prove a point. Your passion to be known and to be celebrated. Any spirit that has taken advantage of you by the blood of the eternal covenant, I cast those spirits out of your life. Out of your destiny. Out of your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore I declare over your life, no more stagnation. Age long doors that have refused to open. In the name of Jesus, we swing them open now. Hear me. Whatever has stunted your office, your business, the works of your hands, every manifestation of pride that has come through you, directly or indirectly, or has come from your children, and even those you are raising spiritually or otherwise. I pray may the mercy of God speak for you. Grace to walk in true humility. Receive that grace. Grace to acknowledge Jesus as the source and the only source of your rising. May that grace be released upon you. Hear me. Any association in your life that seeks to distract you from acknowledging Jesus and anything that is planted in your heart that makes you ashamed of letting the nations know that he is the lifter I command it out of your heart now but thou shall remember the Lord thy God but thou 
shall remember the Lord thy God but thou shall remember the one who lifted the one who blessed that grace comes upon you now hear me some of you it will not reach the next one week you will return back with strange testimonies of God's open. I say this to you by the God of heaven some of you before next Sunday you will stand here to share tears from testimonies of the living power of humility by this grace doors that were once open and are now closed may they be reopened again in the name of Jesus please wave your hands and give him praise thank you father let the name of the Lord be glorified wave your hands give him praise in the name of Jesus Christ just a moment let me make the altar call please keep standing everyone let's honor those who are coming now you are in this place the greatest proof of pride is to refuse to acknowledge God alongside that refusal to pray is pride because it's proof that you do not need the assistance of heaven refusal to study the word wherever you are you are in this auditorium around the balcony or outside i want you to run right now and come and stand before me we have just one minute for you god bless you as you come run leave your seat and come don't let the devil deceive you and say i don't want people to see me come to jesus koinonia are you celebrating salvation don't let anybody stop you where you are. Leave them and come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come. Come. Young and old alike. Come. Those who are following online, following from whatever TV station, following from any nation, I'd like you to be prepared right now. Open your heart before Jesus Christ and pray this prayer as we lead these people our family here in prayer make sure you connect pray and those who will be watching this later on when you get to this part of the video the recording make sure you join to pray please come join them we have one more minute apostle i'm not sure if i'm saved or not run and join them so you can be sure tonight i love the things of god but i'm not sure if i'm saved join them join them please if you're coming rush quickly quickly we're out of time come Come as you are. The maker is about to make you. The lifter is about to lift you. Koinonia, can you celebrate them? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, you are joining them. Come very quickly. Now, look at me. I salute sincerely every one of you who has come here. You have come before Jesus himself. The mediator of the new covenant some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears he's able to give you a new beginning this is a family that loves you passionately and no man condemns you he's able to give you a new beginning lift your right hand high to the heavens allow the tears to come don't be ashamed young and old i honor you for the courage to come the business of jesus is a personal thing it's not just a corporate thing it first starts as a personal decision just help those under the anointing help them please i want you to say this after me but i want you to mean it jesus is here and he's ready to receive you and to give you a new beginning every one of us had to make this decision and i'm telling you that the bible says whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away say after me let it be loud and clear from your heart you are saying it before jesus christ your maker lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i humble myself before you i ask you for mercy for cleansing i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me you rose again for my justification tonight i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life 
the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today, I am born again. I am a child of God. I walk in victory. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. Thank you. We remain ever grateful for the work of salvation. Just help those under the anointing. Father, we present to you these ones that Jesus has brought to himself. It's an honor to stand to midwife this eternal process. Lord, I pray according to the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and that they begin a new journey with Jesus. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you rise from glory to glory. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, let it be a new beginning to, for you from today. You go forward ever and backward never. The door of yesterday is closed forever and you begin to make progress. No guilt in life and no fear in death. Jesus is your victory. Be blessed and be lifted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Congratulations. Now, there is a counselor. Please look at me, all of you. Thank you. I celebrate you. There's a counselor waving his hands. Please, all of you, just follow them in concert. Just a minute or two. They'll just have your details and appraise you and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Please celebrate them. Celebrate them. Be careful as you walk with the cranes. Are you celebrating this harvest koinonia? Oh, takes me home here in the love of Christ. I'll stand. Mm. I pray for everyone here in the name of Jesus. May the Lord honor you. And the Lord bless you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you